This episode of Beyond the Heavy is sponsored by Pedro. What's up, Pedro? Thanks, man. Love you. Good to see you, brother. Good to good to sit down with you, man. Uh, Santa Oscuridad. I said it right. Yeah. First time, yeah. As soon as you yeah. corrected me before I hit record, yeah. you were correct me. I had to get that right. I had to get it right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, brother. Good to see you, man. I mean, I, I see we got a wall of, wall of guitars. We're gonna get we're gonna get into this that. Is, yeah, this is Hombre Malo Studios. Is where we do all the recording oh, for oh. uh, Santa and Metal Wave and uh, Hellstar as well. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, talk to me. Talk to me. How did uh, Santa Oscuridad start? You know, I know I, I heard I heard uh, some of your guys' stuff. My favorite song is Padre Nestro. I'm for, you know, the oh, okay, cool. It's yeah. cool, man. It's good. It, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear our, our culture be represented in metal, man, and heavy and heavy music, man. It's, it's always it's, this is a blessing, you know, to hear it and to see it play out, man. But I mean, talk to me. How did how did the band come about? Well, we were um, I'm my uh, my wife and I are good friends with uh, Rudy Rocha and his wife. And we you know we've known each other for a little bit. And Rudy plays in a in a uh, a band called La Fiebre, which is a Tejano band. It's like kind of a regional uh, music uh, for Texas. It's in Spanish, okay. but it's like uh, it's like cumbias and rancheros and stuff like that. Nice. And man. so I mean, he's he's been nominated for a Grammy three times already with the uh, Latin Grammys and stuff. Oh, so wow. um, <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. You know, it, it, he, you know, he's pretty much a heavy hitter as well. And, and uh, um, we, we, we go out all the time. And it's one particular night, uh, a friend, a couple of friends of ours were playing and they were in a band called uh, Gigante, which is a tribute to rock and Espanol. Okay. And, um, and so we went out there and, and we were, we were listening to him and, and, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of the rock and his Juanes and, Elefante and you know Caifanes, Mana, those type of songs, and and yeah. though they're good, it's not really rock, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, mm-hmm. I, I had mentioned it to Rudy. I said, you know, the only thing missing in rock in Espanol is rock. You know, there wasn't <laughs> anything that was like kind of heavy or anything. Yeah. And he said, I mean, we had been drinking, so he goes, hey, well, let's let's make a band, let's mm-hmm. do that, you know. And I was like, oh uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, man, let's do yeah. it. And then uh, I said, are you serious? He's like, yeah, man, let's do that. Mm-hmm. I said, all right, cool. So um, it just so happened the bass player walks off the stage and we, we've known, known him for a while. His name is Ray Solis. And he, he, uh, he comes off the stage and we're like, hey, man, you want to be our bass player? And he's mm-hmm. like, what? You know, he's what like, well, all of a about? sudden? You know? <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I said, yeah. me and Rudy are going to put a, a, a band together. It's going to be uh, like uh, hard rock metal in Espanol. And then he was like, well, so both of you guys? And he was like, yeah, I'm down. Let's do that. You know, and then within maybe a couple of weeks, we had all the members, you know, okay. uh, Ray knew uh, our drummer, Jaime Recio, and, uh, and Juan Ramirez was singing for the, the, the tribute band in Spanish. And okay. uh, what uh, attracted me to Juan was it, his voice was was different it was he wasn't like you know the the screamer or he didn't have the like you know james rivera high voice and, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know he he had a a, a a more of a a cleaner voice but it was unique you know and it sounded yeah. cool and he can get a little gritty you know if we need him to but uh, for the most part i think that's what set us apart from all the other bands that kind of have that uh rock metal sound you know yeah and um so i went home i i wrote maybe i think i wrote two songs that night and Mm -hmm. then i wrote like another one um like a few days later and then i kind of presented it to them and i was like well this is what i'm coming up with i you know obviously i didn't want it to sound like hellstar Mm because then i should just do hellstar yeah exactly exactly (laughs) yeah so uh so i wanted it to sound a little more you know straightforward you know like i said hard rock metal you know straightforward metal and um and so, yeah, everybody was like down with it. Like, yeah, oh, this is great. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing about the band too is that um, we uh, we're all like have been doing it for so long. You know, like I've been doing you know Hellstar for forty years now. Rudy's been playing for 
Fievre for 35 years, I think. And so everybody had a, a lot of experience, you know, and, and the experience on stage, not just, you know, playing, but on stage as well and recording yeah. and everything. So no, no, nobody was like really nervous, you know, when we got together for that first time, we, everybody like knew their parts and we went through rehearsal, like, wow, you know, we, we actually sound like we played together before, you know, yeah. and that was just from, that's just from, like I said, just having veteran musicians that, that, uh, you know, study their parts and, you know, and, and get it done. And, and, uh, so it was, it was fun right off the bat. And then nice. as time went on, we, you know, Rudy and I were very good friends, but then I became really good friends with Jaime, our drummer and Juan and, and, um, uh, everybody's married. So like that, first show that we played together you know that's what's kind of like when all the wives met really and uh you know like my wife the, the, the biggest knew, fans already knew. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. my wife knew you know uh rudy's wife already so they, they had a little connection but then you know uh rudy's wife already knew ray's wife and mm -hmm. so it's very easy you know and and sometimes you know there's the the, the politics of behind the scenes of you know you hear like the wives don't get along or whatever. And, yeah. and, and it can, it, it can be a strain. It can be a strain on the band, you know, it, it can, you it can know, be a, a yeah, Yoko situation, right? A, yeah. You know, Cause we're now you're Beatles. like, Oh man, you know, so yeah. she's not going to, she's going to sit over there because this one's sitting over there, you know? And, yeah. And, uh, uh, thankfully that is not, not the issue. You know, the, the, the wives get together. Sometimes they show up for rehearsal and leave together and go drink or, you know, or go yeah. shopping and stuff, you know, yeah. which is, that kind of freaked me out the first time that happened. Like, oh, where are you going? And all five of them left, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah, we're yeah. going to go over here, you know, like, oh, oh cool. All right. <laughs> you know, and, you know, they got, they came back and, you know, so like after rehearsal, we, it's not uncommon for us to have a few drinks or, you know, go have some a late dinner or something. And, yeah. and so the, the, the band is a, a very much a family, you know, oh, and, nice, and, uh, nice. and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a blessing, man. You know, you, you, you hear about all these bands that they, you know, they, they just kind of play together, but they're, they don't hang out. They don't talk. They don't, you know, um, they don't even say hi to each other and stuff. Yeah. And, and I, I've been fortunate enough that like in all the bands I've been in and that I am in, uh, that's not the case. Everybody is, uh, is, it's friendly we text each other and you know yeah. everybody sometimes i have to mute the text because i'm like oh my god can you stop with the, <laughs> I, the just going and off and you're like okay okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> man you know it's like oh, i need to go to sleep you know yeah, and stuff yeah. like that but yeah. you know uh this you know santa oscuridad is definitely like i said it's a, it's a family um it's a little bit uh, of a different um situation than what we have in hellstar where yeah. almost most of the guys are uh are single you know james has a a, a lady but um mm -hmm. you know he lives kind of far from me but we're again you know with james he's like he's my friend he's been my friend yeah. since the beginning of hellstar in 1982 yeah. you know mm -hmm. and, and uh and uh we've had our ups and downs but in the end you know we we're friends you know course, and yeah. i think that's yeah. what what really uh that's what really makes it you know worthwhile and makes it fun and and makes you want to keep doing it you know because uh i'm sure if i was in a band where i just didn't like some of the guys in the band i'd be like well i don't why am i doing this you know exactly, exactly. i mean the, the money's yeah. not i mean if you're playing metal you're not looking to make money you know <laughs> unless so, you're metallica so, or iron man well, I mean, yeah. yeah you know yeah, but that's 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 old yeah. money you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Metallica today coming out on doing Ride the Lightning, and although those are badass albums, I don't know if they make it. You know, yeah, exactly. In, in, in today's world, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. But um, I mean, but they paved the way, so yeah, yeah. Um, and that's not, you know, it's not their fault that they made it, you know, and made no, it to no, that, no, no. I think, so, I think, I think that's a good thing about you know what, what sounds so good about Santa Oscuridad is that. You know, you could hear that in the music. And I've talked to a couple cats that are just like, hey, you know what? We're best friends outside of outside of the music. I'm like, well, yeah, man. Like, of course, it has to be, you know, because if not, we're not having a Rolling Stone situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You yeah. know what I mean? And that's and that's cool yeah. because I'm listening to you guys. And like I was telling you right before I hit uh, record that, you know, that my favorite song was Padre Nestro. And I'm like, man, dude, like you could hear like a good mix of the rock in Espanol and then the metal influence coming in. 
You guys are yeah. right there, right there. I yeah. love it, man. I love yeah. it. Cool. I've, Thank and, you. And I was, I was showing my wife and, 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 and some of the people who watch the show know like that my wife is not really into metal, you know, yeah. but she loves like cumbia. She loves reggaeton. She likes like, you know, Hispanic music, Latin music and stuff. And she's like, yeah. I could get into this. I'm like, let me ask him for a shirt then. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Sure, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I'm like, I hear it, brother. Like if it feels like what I, again, like I said, before I hit record, it's like, it's good to see our culture bringing it to the heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you been know, a long time what, coming. What's funny is that, um, you know, we, when we first started playing and, and, and we, I mean, we didn't think twice about doing it in Spanish because, uh, I mean, that's my first language. You know, yeah. I'm not, at, I'm like you though, at, over the years, all you speak is English at school and stuff. So your mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Spanish starts to lag, but still, you know, I'm fluent in it. And my wife is, uh, was a bilingual teacher. Um, so she can always uh, go back and like read lyrics and like, no, it really goes, you're supposed to say this. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So she'll, so we have like a little uh, system too. We'll write lyrics and then we let her proofread and she goes, oh, change that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good. Um, but um, getting back to the whole cultural thing is that, yeah, all of us were, we grew up listening to mariachi music on, on the weekends <laughs> when our grandmother was, you know, uh, cleaning the house and or you know when they would yell at us and be mad at us it was in spanish you know yeah. so it, it, it was always <laughs> yeah. that you know and, yeah. and uh so you just uh you yeah you know, i mean we that's what we know that's what that's our that's our heritage and our culture yeah and um and so like i said when, once we started putting the band together writing lyrics and then it just started kind of I'm like, hey, no, we're going to do it like this in Spanish. And everywhere we would go and play, it was always like, okay, the first time we played, we said, okay, what, what's the reaction going to be like? Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the people that didn't speak Spanish at all were like, I didn't know what you were saying, but it was, I loved it. It was badass, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, it, you know, it, and, and a lot of times they'll come up and they'll say, hey, man, uh, I didn't realize you were singing in Spanish till like three, four songs into it. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, right, I guess sure. so. You know, right, you know, yeah. I mean, when you see a new band, you can't, you don't know any of the lyrics. You're just kind of uh, listening, true. you know. Yeah. And um, so, like I said, as time goes on, and I get, I've done a lot of interviews, and they say like, well, why Spanish? And I'm like, well, why not? You know, I mean, it's, oh yeah, it's it's yeah. our it's our culture, <laughs> and 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 um, we we played in San Antonio a couple of times now, mm -hmm. and uh, we've we've always kind of opened up for other bands and I was, but they were all English speaking bands and I asked around like, Hey, was is there an, another, you know, band kind of like us, it's doing it in Spanish, you know? And, and they were like, nah, we've never seen anybody do this in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And I was like floored, like, wow, this is San Antonio, man. I mean, yeah. you can't go anywhere and not hear someone speak Spanish. Of course. I mean, yeah. you can't, can't go to a taqueria and not order in Spanish. You, you know? have I mean, to order in Spanish. Every, yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody <laughs> speaks Spanish there. And then you don't, you don't have like, well, not one band that was doing it. And I was like, no, no, th that's even more reason to, to kind of uh, maybe spearhead a movement and get, and get more people to, 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 uh, to start writing some songs. Even if it's one song, you know, do it in Spanish, you know, oh, yeah. if, you know, if you know how to speak the language just do it you know don't don't let our culture die like that man i mean yeah. we, we have so much to offer and, and you know the, spanish is the second language of the united states you know and you know for soon, soon to, to be, be first so unrepresented yeah well there you go man. <laughs> we on it brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so you you know you you uh you you look at it that way and you're like, hey man, we should be it should be the other way around. It should be a lot of bands doing this in Spanish, you know, yeah. not not just us or you know a handful here and there. I know uh, Sid Aguirre, uh he's got um, he's in Pancho Villa now, so I mean they do they, they do the the whole Spanish thing too, metal, yeah. and and they they sound really great. And hopefully we'll be going to uh, to to Las Vegas to play with those guys here pretty soon. Oh, um, nice, they're, nice. You let they're, hopefully they're working on that. if it's in two weeks, brother, I'll see you there, man. <laughs> I, I, don't know, man. I, I think uh, it's going to be towards the end of the year. You know, we're, we're, I'll still, I'll we're try to make to, it up. I love yeah, Vegas. We're trying, we're, we're trying to do maybe a an LA and a and a, a Vegas show to get you know back to back. Sure, to yeah. make you know make it worth the flight and all yeah. that. You know, yeah, yeah. so 
um, yeah, we're, you know, kind of working on that. We did the, uh, we got, we just released a single Ojo Sasi by Shakira, um, the cover of Shakira's song. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're just trying to do some stuff that's a little bit different from, you know, all our other bands, you know? Yeah. 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 And that what's up everybody want to jump in really quick to tell about one of my favorite brands and my brothers over at Heavy Defender Merch. Heavy Defender merch products are a must-have for any heavy metal fan. Their banners, pins, and apparel is made from high-quality materials that feature bold, eye-catching designs that are truly to capture the essence of the metal lifestyle. The shirts are comfortable and durable as hell, man. The hoodies are perfect for them when you're leaving the whiskey and it's fucking 2 o'clock in the morning, it's cold as shit. <laughs> heavy Defenders offers a great selection of products from any metalhead looking to represent the passion in freaking style. With unique designs and quality material, hey, check out HDM. And that's important, man. It's like, I like, I, you said it best. And maybe it needs to be on a shirt. It's just don't let the culture die. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's that's why I resonate with you guys so much because when I was listening to you guys, I, I was like, fuck, this is what I was kind of aiming for a little bit with my solo stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, my whole, the whole thing for my solo stuff was, you know, putting some culture, right. I have some cumbia drums. I have some Spanish stuff. I have a really good, uh, a phenomenal, uh, and, and she's, she's, she's out of my head right now, but she did vocal Spanish vocals in one of my songs, like really, oh, cool. really, beautiful beautiful voice and i'm like i gotta put my culture in here man i gotta put some 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 of my stuff in here because i can't let it die right because we have so much to offer you know what i mean for we sure have man so much yeah. yeah yeah and then you know you you, you look at like bands like blue heady and stuff like that where it's a little more extreme you yeah. know um yeah so <laughs> you know you, yeah. you you think about those bands and you're like but they're not you know they're not really from here no, you no, know, no, no. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about like we we live here in the in, in the United States. We were born right. here, you know, second generation, maybe third generation, but still, you know, uh, we we need to carry that representation on, you know. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm really really proud of the project, and and uh, um, I wish we could play a little bit more. But like you have all these guys doing everything, you know. Yeah. Everybody's in in a couple of bands, and and. And, you know, like Rudy's in a, you know, like I said, very well established, established band. So he's, he plays a lot, you know, mm -hmm, with that mm -hmm. band. And so mm -hmm. we're like, are you off on this weekend? How about this weekend? And same thing with uh, our bass player, uh, Ray, he's got a band called Love and War. And I think they're working on a new album and they, you know, they play out quite a bit. Wait, 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 so wait love and you know, Lo Love and War. Love and War. John Adams. Yeah. Yeah. They, so I Ray, interview. Oh shoot. Oh wow. Alexa just Ale Alexa's <laughs> coming into the interview. And there I I they they I interviewed the singer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And oh, on this okay, show. Yeah. yeah, they're from Texas yeah. too, right? Yeah, they're from yeah, yeah they're from yeah. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Also raising in Love and War too. Raising Love and War too. Oh so we, shit. We, shit. We, yeah. So we got like okay. a little uh we have like a little not local, but we have like a uh, like a Texas kind of a group. super group going you uh -huh. know? Uh -huh. okay you know, where i you know i'm coming from hellstar and Ra uh race from love and war and, and rudy's from you know la fiebre so these are all well-established bands and, shout out you to know, those guys like, man yeah and, much, and, much and, love and, for them dude they're great yeah, they're and, great yeah Juan, juan's uh juan's also well he was in a band called uh straight jacket theory i'm not sure if he's still doing it and and uh Jaime has done you know as far as a drummer he's done all kinds of stuff I don't know why Alexa keeps freaking out over here. She wants part of the interview, man. She she likes no. she likes to talk. <laughs> yeah, but that's not even the wake word over here. It's uh, uh, it's a different wake word. I don't know uh, why it's going thun thun and stuff. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I hope but that yeah. doesn't ruin the interview. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Editing, brother. The power of editing. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, no, no. But okay, yeah. So, so a lot of history. A lot of good stuff in there, mixing pot with the culture, man, you know, but one thing I want to ask, you know, specifically about, about you guys, right, you know, is, is what's, what's next for it, though, you know what I mean, like, what, you know, are we putting out an album, are we going to get some new material, right, Tour yeah, uh, we're, we're doing, uh, 
well, we were going to do like a, an EP all together, right? Yeah, and then, yeah. And then we started thinking about it. I was like, well, let's see how how it works when we if we do like a single. And that's why we did the cover for uh, Ojo Sasi. <clears throat> and uh, and we put that out, did a video, and that worked out pretty good. And we said, okay, well, let's like just do maybe four more singles. And then at the end, we'll culminate the whole EP with like one extra song on the EP mm -hmm. all together mm -hmm. and, and do it that way. Uh, that way we can kind of spread it out and keep the name out there and kind of build some momentum. You know, I mean, when we had good momentum going into, you know, right before COVID and then that happened yeah. and like, you know, we released, uh, we released a second EP and it just died because we, you know, we couldn't do anything. You know, we yeah. had, we had, uh, I think we had about three or four, uh, like a little mini Texas tour set up and we had, uh, you know, a listening party. We we're going to do, you know, release video and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so we, you know, we thought about it. Like, do we release it? Do we do, do we wait a couple of months until this whole COVID thing go, is gone or what mm -hmm. do we do? And we just said, oh, let's go ahead and release it. This should only last, you know two three months you know that's what we all and, said man yeah man yeah. And, then, and then you see what oh. happened and, and then so yeah. it, it, it 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 killed it would we're not the only ones i mean it, yeah. it killed i'm sure there's a lot of bands that just died like yeah. well, okay well I, we're not doing anything it's just yeah. not gonna happen yeah and, right, right, and we had people that you know that did it for for a living that were you know selling merch or they were you know running sound or doing monitors and stuff like they had nothing yeah. and so you know their their income went to zero like right away so exactly they had to catch different gigs and different jobs and then when it came time to like hey you know uh, let's go back out you know and they're like hey man i'm already yeah, i'm already doing this you know yeah 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 um, but i mean but that's the thing it's like you know and and i think um what's important is that we stay together you know what I mean? Like even through the tough time, even yeah. though we, maybe we would have thought it was like two months, three months, whatever it may be, you know, we're here now, right? 2023, yeah. brother, you know, yeah. it's st still hitting strong. The music is out, you know, and people need it now more than ever, even though, yeah, maybe after there's a lot of saturation because everybody was at home and they were probably playing again or whatever. Yeah. But the beauty of it is that we got music, <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and then sure. we got yeah. you guys, you know, and we got yeah. love and more, you know, we got all these phenomenal guys that are out putting it out. And that's the, that's what we, that's what we need more than ever. And kind of bringing it full circle, like what you were saying about our culture, man. But, you know, if, 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 if you know, if, if, if we have the opportunity, why not, man? You know what I mean? Oh, it yeah, has to happen. Sure. Yeah. It's a yeah. universal language, right? Yeah. Like we how did. you were saying, yeah. We just got to get out there and, and play and, and, you know, kind of put it in front of her. And, and uh, Ray and I have a, a little saying between ourselves, like, man, just give us, give us 15 minutes, man. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just let us play for 15 minutes and you can walk out the door after that if you don't like it or, mm -hmm. you know, but we guarantee you, you're, you're going to stick around for the whole thing. You're going to like it. Yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, and that's happened time and time again, we opened up for Saxon. Oh, nice. Uh, and it, this was before the pandemic we opened wow. up for saxon and it was it was saxon it was all white people in the crowd you know had no idea yeah. who they just like saw this weird name and and <laughs> uh and they were just like oh yeah i mean this band is opening up for saxon or whatever and we played and it was like one of the first times that i've ever watched uh from the stage like hey we're taking these guys over you know, like I could see it in their face. They were like, yeah. "Oh man!" And then they started bobbing their heads. And then, then there was like fist pumping. And then when we finished, it was like, "Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah It's like yeah. a big, you know, hug from the That's room. Like, yeah. yeah, cool, man. And they, and the, most of those guys, they didn't speak Spanish at all. But they, you know, I mean, they, they really, really dug it, you know. And so, uh, I mean, that, that that night, we, I don't know, we sold a lot of merch. You know, nice. it was a line. I was like, dang, you know, there's all these people are buying the CD and they're buying caps and they're buying shirts and stuff. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was it was a really, really special night. And it was like a, uh, something that like kind of proved it to all of us that like, hey, you know, we we really have something special here and, and uh, uh, we're just going to have to work at it. You know, even though we have fans that are other bands that are successful in their own right, mm -hmm. this band is not those bands. Yeah. And so even though we have you know a few names scattered in the band um you 
we still have to work at it, you know, of course. And, uh, of course. so, um, uh, that's what we're doing. You know, we're just going to keep doing and trying to, you know, play as much as we can. And, and, um, we have about, like I said, we're going to release singles, like you know, okay. four or five singles, mm-hmm. but, uh, we do have like, I think we have uh, another seven or eight songs in the can already. Oh, nice. And okay. so, I mean, if we wanted to, we, we, we could release it all. Um, but, Again, then you kind of like blow your load, and then it's like, oh, that's it, you know. Like, well, what's next? You know, yeah, what, yeah, what you got to do l- next. You know, longevity, man. Longevity. Yeah, yeah just yeah. kind of spread yeah. it out, and and uh, yeah. and hopefully, uh, I've gotten into the the video uh, videography, so I've been shooting the videos and nice. Um, I've been doing some of the editing. I did that for. Uh, I'm in another band with James Rivera called James Rivera's Metal Wave, and, mm-hmm. and in that band we do old new wave songs but metal okay and so um okay like we do black celebration from depeche mode depeche mode, yeah we do uh echo and the bunny man we do um i mean it's that type of stuff that we're that we're playing but it you know we've changed it and made it metal and i've shot those two videos yeah uh, i've edited those two videos so it's uh it's like you know omni model studios is kind of turning into like a real like production you know, hey, yeah like a yeah. Like kind of little mini production do it yourself uh yeah. production place at home you know i i've yeah. uh gotten better at mixing i mixed the last uh the last um uh, single for santa scudida which i'm i'm really proud of that mm-hmm. you know you know and um, that's good too man because the production i'm hearing is it's clear man it's cool. good you, man. it's, yeah. it's it's crisp, and again, and I'm gonna say it to every person that makes your stuff, and I can hear the bass. Kudos to you, man! I could hear it. I could hear yeah, the bass. Cool. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, as one bass player. You know, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta show the love. Gotta show the respect to yeah. people that acknowledge us. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want an oh, injustice for all situation. It, you know. <laughs> oh man, no, 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 no. Um, oh, poor, J- poor Jason. I knew, I, 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 I know Jason. Not like, like best friends or really good friends, but I know Jason. And, and uh i known him since blossom and mm. uh and then when when that album came out i was like oh what happened why wouldn't you why would you do that you know and, yeah and, uh i just that's some, that, it, that, it's, that, un, it's unfortunate man, man but, that, yeah, i mean yeah. after that man you hear the bass on on the black album so that's good you know yeah 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 well yeah remastered <laughs> and everything but i mean that, that that type of shit had me going to therapy man that that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know because it's, no, it's you know it's, i, I want to make sure that every, you can hear everything you know yeah and that's that's the whole thing is that you want to like a good mix of everything and 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 uh being a guitar player um i'm uh i'm really I really try to uh, keep it in, in a in a good spot, mm. but I have a friend that, uh, that uh, he masters, and I'll always like send it to him first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what do you think? And he was like, uh, I think the guitars actually need to come up, you know. So I'm like, okay, good, you know. Mm. So it's not just me. I, you know, all right, you know. I'm the opposite. And I'll send him. A, yeah, I'll yeah. send him another one. Go like, okay, <laughs> uh, this one. Oh yeah, it's better. I like. You know, you probably could come up another DB or two if you wanted yeah. to. Okay, you know, so, um, but that's that's the whole thing is that you want them, you know, everybody to some some clarity to be heard. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. hard, man, and people don't realize like a lot of times when albums are made, that's where all the money goes. The mix is the for, mix. You know, you, you, yeah, you send it to somebody who's badass at mixing, and they're going to charge a lot of money, but you're going to have like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say like dark side of the moon or anything like but, oh, but no. you're gonna have a really great mix you you know, can't come with that. dark side of the moon yeah. is dark side of the moon yeah. brother you oh know, yeah, yeah. it's like you Alan know Parsons just wow you know come but on, yeah i'm just yeah. saying you know you want it you want everything to be clear and and, and heard and stuff yeah. and definitely the bass is is like i mean that's where you get the the that's, feeling in your chest yeah. you know that's yeah. the heavy man <laughs> yeah yeah it is man. yeah, yeah. And, you it know is. a lot of people don't realize like that guitar tone is really a lot of that bass tone mixed in you know that's mm-hmm. that's where you're getting that the really blend. good chunk you know yeah. yeah that blend yeah 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 no because i'm hearing it and i'm like oh yes i'm like they did it they did it you know like i was yeah. like okay it came up and everything i heard them on my headphones and stuff i was like oh, perfect it's there it's crisp it's clear it's right where it needs to be in the mix sitting with the drums and i want to yeah. ask is it is it and I don't know. I mean, maybe just maybe the production side of me is like, did you have him with the bass drum behind it in front of it? How did you want him there? Or how did he how did always, Ray want it? 
Oh, I don't know how Ray won it. I, I mix. Yeah, like, I don't give a shit. You just <laughs> play it, and I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like here on, on the on the last single, I just made. I always tr- just try to make sure that uh, it starts from the bottom up. Obviously, so I get a good mix of the drums, yeah. and then I'll bring up the bass, and then when I feel like it's, I'm in sitting in the room with the bass and the drums together. And they sound like they're jamming together. Mm-hmm. Then I, then I, then I'll start bringing everything else. Up ah, after that, okay. you know? Oh, that's that's a good so, that's a good approach, brother. That's, that, good approach. that's the way I do it. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how everybody else does it. I'm like I said, I'm kind of a novice at mm-hmm. mixing, but you know, I I want you know that's I figured that that would be the best way to do it. Just start with a good drum mix and then bring that up. And then as you go along, then you're like, oh, I think. Maybe the snare's a little pokey, bring it down. And mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. The little um, the little fine tunings. Yeah. yeah and you know, yeah. So I, I I talked to Bill Matoyer, I sent him mixes and and, and uh, I'm like, man, I I just keep, keep second guessing myself. And and he said, Well, welcome to the club. Everybody who makes it is gonna <laughs> is second guessing. So yeah. you, you know, all the even the the big dudes, you know, and I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, uh, well, great. You know, I guess yeah, I'm yeah. a good company, you know. Oh man, we <laughs> there's so many times where I've had to go to the car. And I'm like on like, you know, track one session number 85 or something like that because I'm trying to test it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're yeah. we're all on that same boat, dude. I'm there yeah, with you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 But that's funny because I'll, I'll do the opposite, though. Like, as you were saying, like the guitars are too low. I'm like, the bass is too much. Like my buddies are like, dude, turn it down, dude. I'm like, I know, but I, <laughs> I play uh, the damn thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want yeah, yeah. to make sure it's there. They're like, dude, you're yeah. fine. Just bring it down a little bit. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's, maybe it's because I'm just fighting for our bases. You know, that's what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I I just want everything to be, you know, for me when when I mix too, it's yeah. like I don't want um, I like everything pretty dry. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want mm-hmm. um, I don't want a shit ton of reverb on the vocals. Like you know, I you can do that, but I I just learned it. Like ah, it just seems like the more effects you put, more delay, more reverb that you put on anything it starts pushing that instrument back mm. and so i want you know, everything I, I want everything in your face i want the listener to feel like he's sitting in our jam room like mm. in the middle and he, he can just feel like, hear notes. everything right there yeah he's yeah, just like right it. there yeah. like and he's just in in the room in the middle room with the perfect mix you know mm-hmm. um and so when you when you're at a rehearsal room like the, the the drums don't sound massive. They don't have massive amounts of reverb. They're very dry, you know, yeah. you know, you're hearing the floor tom go boom, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, and then that's it. I mean, the kick drum is just like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no trail to it or anything. And same thing with the guitar, you know, if, it, if you just had a Marshall amp right in your face and you would just, that's all you would hear, pop, mm. you know, there wouldn't be any, uh, there wouldn't be a lot of reverb around it, you know, so. I try it starts to, uh, to keep muddy, everything. It yeah, muddies it yeah, up. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, not like the solos. I will do a, a delay on it, you know, um, just because like like sometimes when you're holding out a note and stuff, it just helps yeah, yeah. Just, no, that, you know, it's, round it's, out it, the to, sound to push but, it out. But it's, to push it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but as far as like rhythm, you know, the the basic tracks, I like them very dry. Very, very like I said, I cut. like I like for them to to the listener to feel like oh, I'm. I'm like in the room, you know, mm-hmm. so um, okay. I don't want them to feel like I'm in the balcony at, you know, the Toyota Center, you know, watching this show. I, mm-hmm. I want them to feel like they're on the stage. They're they're there with us. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I mean, it's just but... a, a different look, at, a different way to looking at it. Oh, yeah, There's some absolutely. bands that want, you know, they want you to feel like you're at a, you know, you, no, we're an arena band. You know, yeah, 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 they yeah. want that that big, you know, kind of arena sound. But, uh, you know, I'm. I guess uh, I, there, all the albums that I've listened to over the years, and some of my favorite ones, like the the I think uh, we care a lot by Faith No More. It's okay. really dry and like, oh, man, it's just yeah. so clear, you know. Yeah, I love yeah. that, you know. And that was kind of the turning of the age away from the reverb and stuff like that. Which is, I'm glad you brought that up because you know, kind of transitioning to the question I wanted to ask you is, you know, what are some of the influences, right? What 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 are the artists that made Larry? You know what I mean? Uh, oh, from the beginning or like uh, recording wise? I mean, give it to me all, brother. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, in, in the in the beginning, you know, my my older brother uh, was really big influence on me, and he he was the one that introduced me to you know Black Sabbath and Rush and Deep Purple and you know Alice Cooper and and 
he was the one that told me like, hey, there's this guitar player. I just saw him last night. He's playing an Ozzy band. His name is Randy Rhodes. Mm. Go buy that album, you know, mm-hmm. and sight unseen. I was like, oh, my brother said to go buy the album. I'm going to go buy it. You know, mm-hmm. he just had a great ear. And um, so like that was like all the stuff that I was started listening to at, at a young age. You know, I was like nine, ten years old and, mm. and we were listening to to those bands and um, he's five years older than me so um yeah he was saying like hey check out this guitar player and check out this guy you know he's mm. really badass and mm. so it's uh you know as time went on you know you, you you start to find your own bands too like you know judas priest and then you know saxon and mm. and uh iron maiden of course and mm-hmm. um that whole uh new wave of british heavy metal was it was it was groundbreaking for us you know, of course. A lot. not yeah. just us like you know you talk to like gary holt from exodus and he'll tell you like oh we were you know we were listening to all that stuff you yeah know? so and we yeah. so were we you know we were listening to uh budgie and legs diamond and bands like that uh moxie and all what we thought what was probably some is still kind of underground you know the a lot of people don't know those bands but those those were the bands that we were playing as as a, as a cover band and a lot of times people would think that they were our songs and we're like no man that's that's a uh, budgie or hey that no that's mm-hmm. uh that's that's like diamond underworld king never heard mm-hmm. that go by yeah, it yeah. you know and, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know the whole juice priest thing and iron maiden we did a lot of maiden um the first band i was in we did a lot of rush actually we were Ooh. We were aggressive stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, we were, well, it was it was early rush, like you know, we did um from the Work, first, I guess, all like working man and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, we did yeah. all that. We did yeah. working man, um uh, what you're doing, we mm. did uh uh fly by night, we did um anthem, we did Bastille Day, we did um I mean we did a lot of a yeah. lot of rush. It was three you're like until until was, we did twenty one twelve. Well yeah. we did twenty we did uh, oh yeah we tried try to do side one of 21 12 we did that's, a good chunk of it we did a good chunk of it and we were kids man i mean we yeah. were like 16 you know yeah, yeah yeah so i mean that you're 16 years old and you're you're trying to play that stuff that's like way ahead of your of your ability i hey, mean question. all you can do is like kind of keep climbing going like, yeah oh, I, you know I, we we did it you know <laughs> we, we, we can play that song you know so yeah um and it just made you better and, and then all the bands around you were they were playing and they all had their chops and stuff so um at least here in houston the, it was a i would say it was a friendly competition you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh john adams who uh who is the guitarist for uh, love and war i've known mm-hmm. him since then you know since way mm-hmm. back then so you know he's another cat that's just been doing it forever and, and you know he's kept playing and 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 uh, you know he's a great guitarist as well so mm. um so all you know that's where it kind of began for us and then we got to the point where we we're like okay well uh let's write let's write our own stuff you yeah know? and yeah. um uh we put out a demo in 82 hellstar did and um and somehow or another, back then it was a trade tape trading day so somehow or another another it ended up in in the uk and uh this friend of mine came by and he said hey man did you know your demo is in this magazine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i was like no get get out of here yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like no really like it's the number one demo and i he, i opened it up and i was like uh, you're like no way <laughs> it's, i thought it was a joke it's like did, did you do this man it's like no dude go buy the magazine yeah, 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 yeah. It. it was called metal yeah. forces and I, I i did i went out there and got it and i was like oh man it's true yeah. oh wow so we felt like <clears throat> oh i don't know how this happened but cool you know it's it it made it to the uk and then a few months later um combat records you know reached out to us they found us through that and uh they wanted to sign us and then that's how that's how that all started to happen you know yeah, man. and uh and so here we it- are we know with Hellstar 40 years later still putting out albums and stuff. Yeah. So I want I want to ask, I mean, yeah, we, we got some the influences there. You could hear it in Hellstar, right? But you know, I want to ask you how how is it different as a guitar player playing in Santa Oscuridad to Hellstar, right? Because they're they're two different bands, right? And I want to know how would you, you know, how do you what's your approach to it? Is there an approach or is it hey, like I'm just doing my thing, man? 
No, it's not like that. I definitely ah. have a, 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 I definitely know when I'm writing something for Hellstar mm-hmm. and I definitely know when it's going to be something for Santa Oscuridad. Um, now, when I start the riff, I don't know. But once the start, the riff starts to take shape, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. This is, this can be, this, you know, obviously the Hellstar stuff's very complex. So I know it's, if it has a lot of notes and stuff, I'm going to, I want to use that for that band. And mm-hmm. if it's something a little more like straightforward, you know, something like uh, the, like a cross. I always tell people it's like a cross between uh, Accept and uh, the Scorpions, uh, oh, that yeah. type of stuff. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, with the, like a Spanish feel to it or something. And then I already know, like, oh, that that's going this way, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, the, 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 the you know, you sit down and and um, and I try to do something every day. I try to pick up the guitar and try to, I mean, you, 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 you can sit down and, and try to riff every day and you're not going to come up with anything, but you try, you know? And yeah, so yeah. Uh, that's how I approach it. Yeah. Sometimes uh, um, I won't get anything. I'm like supposed to go to dinner or something. All of a sudden it's like, Oh, I think I got something. I'll grab my phone. Like, okay, I'll just record it like this and I'll, I'll have it on my phone and then mm. I'll come back later and then try to do like a little riff here, you know, actually in pro tools and put like a drum loop to it and see how it sounds. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that's really how I, how I approach writing for the two bands. Um, okay. 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 Uh, and and then, you know, I have I a lot of it. help in, in, in Hellstar that, you know, have, you know, Garrick, uh, our drum, our bass player Garrick Smith and uh, Andrew Atwood, the other guitarist, they they are both really good writers as well. So mm, you know okay. they can they can sometimes they can like listen to my stuff and go like, oh, I think it sounds it really sounds like something else. You know, try changing that part. So even though they may not like actually write it, but they've told me like <clears throat> change that or make Mixed. this a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, then it's like it there's a little more direction. Yeah, it's a little more direction, yeah. and mm-hmm. and that's that's part of production. You know, is is being able to like listen to somebody and go like, yeah, uh, try doing this instead. <clears throat> and I think for me uh, personally, it took a long time to get to the point where I understood. Uh, how to write with someone else and how to be produced by someone else because mm. um, there's a there's a big if you're writing the songs of the, you know at least when I was young it was like well it's my song this is the way it goes you know <laughs> that's it you know this is your part and yeah. then you're gonna yeah. sing this and here's the lyrics I've written for you and and, and then <laughs> that's how it goes you know and, yeah. and so um, it wasn't until uh, I guess maybe like uh, King of Hell when we wrote we wrote King of Hell um rob trevino was the, the the other guitarist in the band and he had we we had a great relationship as far as uh writing and uh he would say hey you know do this instead and i would be like no man i mean i wrote it like this and he's like man you know just do it like this and i was like yeah and and mm-hmm. then one day he just said why do you always fight me man you know just try it yeah, yeah, yeah. give it a shot and then man. i was like i was like I guess he's right. I am always kind of fighting him on this stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once, once that, like that first time when you take that leap of faith and go like, okay, I'll try it your way. And then you listen to it and you're like, man, that is better, you know? And then, then you're like, okay, so what do you think here? What do you think? Yeah. What do you, what should we do here? And, and if he's like, oh, it's cool. All right. You know? And if he said, ah, I think, you know, why don't you hold out just a chord or something and a break needs to go there. Or maybe, you know, what if you try going to this chord instead and you're like, Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and then you, you really get into the whole collaboration of stuff and you yeah. realize like, it's just better, you know, f- for the, for the whole band, yeah. you know, for the, for the band as a whole, when everybody <clears throat> is throwing their, their two cents in, that doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to use it, but at least, you know, that, you know, when other people are, are giving you ideas, that um you should have an, an, an open ear to it and an open mind and go like yeah let me let me go ahead and try that you know yeah. um with santa i'm almost you know kind of here lately i've been at you know to my by myself like doing a lot of stuff but uh-huh. um, um the the uh the first two eps that you know Ru- rudy had written uh, he had some songs already in the can for those so um 
it was fun to to go back and revisit those and produce them and go mm, like I think yeah. this needs to be this needs to be faster you know mm. or you know how about we change this little part here to this and so that that was really fun to do as well um and i hope we can kind of get back into doing that you know yeah. um hey everybody jumping in real quick just to let you know about today's sponsor metal and iron are you a gym goer do you like listening to metal do you like lifting heavy well metal and iron's got you covered with shirts and designs that are there to let people know that you're about the heavy lifestyle none of this gym shark shit none of this adidas nikes not nah, you're there to lift the heavy shit so check it out. Use the code Beyond Heavy for fifteen percent off, and let them know Mayhem sent you. So there, there is, there is like a there as you were saying, like there is kind of a big difference, right? So you're knowing the the nuances, right? Like, hey, okay, this is what Hellstar would be, right? Or this would be would be Santa would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's and, and that's and the, yeah, that's good. And yeah. the two bands tune completely different too. Like uh, mm. uh, Hellstar is tuned a whole step down, so mm. it's like a you know, it's a yeah, really, yeah, yeah. you know low it's dark, tuning, it's heavy. Right? Yeah. yeah, and then uh, Santa Scudi's eyes, 8440, which it's, oh. it's standard tuning, you know. Standard tuning, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, really, and, and I uh, thought you guys, it sounds like you guys are tuned down a little bit, too. I <laughs> thought it was, yeah, oh, wow. Well, no, well. 8440, man, we, uh, oh, wow, well. there we, we go. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah. We, you know, uh, um, the 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 cover we did of Shakita, it's, mm -hmm. it sounds, that one actually does, when I listen to it, it's like, oh, it sounds like we're tuned down, but we're not. It's just the chords that we play over the the verses and make it sound like we're we're like playing a you know in a drop tune or something yeah, like, like a, that like a it, step it, down it, yeah yeah no it's, yeah. it's april 40 you know oh, there you go playing. there you go <laughs> yeah so um yeah cool, so man. that that that's the other thing that's it's very different about the two bands and um i mean uh, we kind of kicked around like eh, maybe we should do something like a half step down in santa but you know we we haven't as of yeah. yet yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 one of those things like, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. It, if you it, guys it, are grooving, it, it's you know? cool to 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 just do something different too. That's the other thing is I I don't want to get caught in like you know, oh, this is what we do, and then we're only going to do this. You know? But um, I have a, a friend. His name is uh, he plays in the band called Forbidden. Um, his name uh, Craig Craig LeCicero, and and he was uh, oh. kind of, he had like a little little rant going on like hey man all those fucking killer um thrash albums from back in the day they were all standard a440 man you know yeah. it's just like that's like the that was the mecca everybody played in a440 so yeah, yeah, yeah. um for us to do a440 is i'm you know i like it it's uh it's like a badge it's, of honor I, it's almost like a throwback kind of yeah, thing yeah, like oh yeah. you played three a440 oh that's interesting you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. i know it, it, Before, it was uh, the other way around <laughs> the new generation man and i'm i'm, I'm yeah. one of them man i'll be i'll be i'll be the first one to admit it you know i'll be in drop drop d drop c you know what i mean yeah. but but at the end of the day that's how we paint man that's the colors right that's how yeah. we put the, you know that's how we yeah. put it together you know it's not it's it's beautiful because we could still hear music still be heavy in the standard tuning right it oh, doesn't yeah. got yeah. we don't gotta go to drop b and or drop whatever like it's yeah. like or the seven strings and the eight strings and all that stuff yeah. now you know like if it ain't broke don't fix it let's get back to the classics man because the classics yeah, still so, can be so heavy sometimes yeah. you know you, you get solo that that it i don't hear a definition in the in the note really you know yeah. that's that's one thing i've noticed but i mean other than that i mean i i if you listen to all those Sabbath albums, where the, I think the they, the lowest they tune was maybe C. Yeah, it was C. Yeah, C. So I, I, I told mean, myself like the lowest they that's the, the lowest they go is the lowest I'll go. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, you know what I mean? Because that's the, yeah. that's the, that's the alpha yeah. and the omega, man. That's the greatest yeah. band of all time. I, I yeah. every podcast I have to say it. That's my band, man. Yeah. But you know, if C was probably that's it. Like, yeah. Yeah, hey, that, you go more that, than that. That, yeah. that first album was in, in standard tuning. It was in standard tuning. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that, uh, that should show you too. Like, Hey, even Sabbath played in standard tuning. It wasn't always, you know, a low tuning, but no, um, no. Yeah. as time went on and they got, you know, darker and heavier, and doomier, you know, they, they just said, Oh, you know, let's tune it down a little bit more, you know, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. why, you know, a lot of those songs are like, you know, into the void and man, those are like 
Ooh, man, goosebumps when Chills, you hear I that, do, yeah, that I the first oh, time. Yeah. Like, oh, God, yeah. that's so heavy. You know, oh, your oh. face is all melted and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just the way Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath starts, just the album, you know, that, dun, oh, yeah. dun, 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 you know, I'm like, oh, yeah. hell yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's it's the sure. greatest, it's the greatest band of all time, man. It's like, we yeah. can't, you can't disagree with that. You know, it doesn't, yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> they're the creators. They're the creators. I was at a NAM show. And yeah. uh, we know it started like a, tons of people were running everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was with a friend of mine and and he grabs me, he goes, oh, you know, and, and I, I turn around. It was Geezer. Oh, and he, and he walked like right. Man. like He walked right in front of us like that. And I was like, oh, dude, the creator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I was like, yeah. Oh, man, I had goose flesh. Like, oh, my God, that was him. He yeah, just yeah. walked in front of us. You know, he, I think we can do like a some signing or something but just for him to like actually like walk like, that you were i mean i feet wanted to away. touch him but, yeah, yeah. So, no that's that's yeah, the those, those guys and, and and then you know like you look at uh, judas priest as well they were they were you know the other band that for me was like oh they were you know that was what we aspired to do you know mm, what let me ask you what's your favorite priest album i have to ask you that. stain class really yeah and you didn't even think about it but you were like you were ready for that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, stay class. I, I have okay. no doubt about it, man. That really? Had, that really? had the saints in hell and, and beyond the realms of death and uh, better by you, better me and exciter. I mean, the intro to exciter, man, your face is yeah. on the floor. It's just melt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, it was metal, man. You yeah. know, for yeah. way back then. You know, That's the classics, man. That's yeah, classic. so I mean, uh, that that one is definitely like for, my for, favorite. For me, it's got to be screaming for vengeance, man. It's just oh really? Be. Yeah, well, it's that's, just it, that's it's much later than me. It's later. <laughs> it's later. Yeah, but yeah. it's 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 just good. It's good. It's good overall, man. It's solid. You know what I mean? Every yeah. everything is a banger on there, man. You know, I know. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit later, but it's just the way they come out. You know, Electric Eye. I'm like, oh, dude, like this is great, dude. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a great album. It's a great album too, but. um for me, you know, I'm, uh, I I started listening to them when almost when they came out, like Sin After Sin, I was already, mm, uh, or mm. maybe Sad Wings of Destiny, I already had that. Mm, mm. I didn't have Rock and Roll I didn't, I didn't, okay. I know I wasn't into them then, but I think either I got Sin Sin After Sin and then went back and got Sad Wings of Destiny, and then you know, kind of kind of went on from there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was I was one of those guys that like listened to that band from almost from the time they came out, and um, like the first Sabbath album was I first was introduced to by my brother was it was the song Black Sabbath. So, oh man! Oh, so um, you got you got yeah. you, that was it. To I, I me, was that's like the beginning, you know. That's like a blessing, dude. That's like a blessing yeah. because like that's to me, and I've talked about this on the podcast and 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 some other some other cats that I'll talk to, like Sabbath, the song Black Sabbath by them. Like it's so monumental because they created the ambiance. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the sound, the the the, the rain, the bell. You know, the thunder. Like you, that was the in, that was the gates of hell opening yeah. for metal. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, for sure. And, and, I was they, like, and they were the first one, to, <laughs> first one to use the devil's note, man. Yeah, you know yeah, that? exactly, exactly. So now, all, like, now all of us do it. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now it's just a standard thing, but yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. Uh, the first time you, you heard that, you know the tritone and it was like scary and you were like damn you know that that's really you know heavy and scary yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, know yeah. no i mean it, like led zeppelin and those bands that they they were doing some stuff that was kind of heavy you listen like communication breakdown it's got that down chuck you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's early metallica it's right there yeah. it, it, it's heavy yeah it's yeah. heavy but it wasn't scary no, you know, no, 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 yeah, no, no. Sabbath, no. It's Sabbath took it to a different place. It's, yeah, it's Sabbath, yeah, to, it's Sabbath so. took it to the dark, to the dark. Yeah, That's what I made it dark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always say, like, oh, I mean, yeah, these other bands were heavy, but I think Sabbath was like the first like heavy metal band. You yeah, know, yeah, That's, yeah. you know, they 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 used some of that bluesy stuff, but it was you know it was just so dark and stuff. You know? Yeah, no, that and was it was it was appealing. You know, it was really really appealing. Obviously, I mean. They've, they've stood the test of time and oh yeah and forever uh, man yeah. and forever. yeah yeah hopefully yeah, hopefully so. you know not only just my generation but the generations after me oh yeah you can know, still appreciate it, it man it's it, it got to be you know they're one of those bands where you show this to somebody like man these guys uh, yeah, you know yeah, you got yeah. listen to this man listen <laughs> yeah, to this, yeah, you know? yeah. and uh 
you know, ho- and, and you know, hopefully uh, they, they they'll listen to, you know, those first Metallica albums when they were really angry. And, oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. The first Megadeth, and, you know, P cells. Really, don't don't, you know, don't even get. Was, we could do a whole episode cool of Megadeth, thing. dude. I could get oh, started. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, yeah. if you'd ask anybody. You, who invented thrash? He'll tell you Matt Mustang did it. Man. Mustang he, did. He's the one that wrote those songs on the first Metallica album. He did it, dude. He's you know? he's and he's so, he's the go- he's the godfather of thrash. Yeah, he every, thrash. everybody was kind of mimicking yeah. him, you know. Yeah, after yeah, that, yeah, You know that whole Bay Area thing, you know. Yeah. And I'm a big Bay Area thrash fan myself, you know. Mm. I'm mean, just a thrash fan in, in general, um, mm-hmm. which is funny because, uh, like, when I do kind of, I write more thrashy stuff for like we have uh, Glory of Chaos maybe three albums back from hellstar it's mm-hmm. real thrashy mm-hmm. and i got so much shit from it you know like oh, yeah. it's like thrash and that's not hellstar and like who the fuck are you to tell me what hellstar <laughs> is you know it's like, You're like I dude, mean, i'm writing I, what i'm I love, writing yeah. I, yeah i love thrash man i love yeah. all my favorite bands there's like exodus and, and death angel and, oh nice, you know, nice creator and megadeth yeah. or early megadeth sepultura that how do, how do you sepultura, feel about how do you feel about I, yeah, I was gonna say testament, man. That's that's to me they're one. They should be. If there was a big five, it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be testament, man. It has to be testament. testament. Well, they were the yeah. bigger of the. Of, of, they were the next biggest band, but I would yeah. I definitely would put Exodus in there. And Exodus, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's it, it's it's all those bands that that came out there, and um, now you have. Well, uh, the other band that, that just totally goes unnoticed a lot of times is Hyrax. I love Irish, Irish. yeah, Irish, yeah, and, yeah. You know, Caton yeah. has been waving that flag for a long time. Uh, yeah, man. yeah. I love Caton, yeah. man. He's he's a metal brother, man. I, yeah, I can't say enough good things about him. He's he's so cool and and down to earth. But they they're another band that you know. I remember listening to them, going like, "God, look at these guys!" Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They they had the yeah. speed, man. They got the speed, man. Oh, for yeah. sure. But brother, I gotta ask you. Okay, I I, I would I have to. I have to turn this segment for the gearheads, man, because I know some gearheads out there are probably looking at your background, probably looking at, you know, your guitars and stuff. What, what, what's your main? What's your, what's your, what's your, what are you playing? Guitar wise? Yeah. Uh, my, my main, my number one, uh, this is my number one Hellstar. This okay. is a. Oh, nice. E- nice. LTD, LTD, uh, uh ESP. fr 1000 oh, nice. it's got okay. the floyd on it so it's it's kind of everybody always thinks it's a, it's a gary holt but it's not it's just a it's one it's almost like his but not not close quite. to it okay uh and then um that's my number one my number two for hellstar is where are you <laughs> uh, he's, gotta look, he's gotta look for it i think well this is kind of my number one okay. this is Oh, this nice. is my this is a Charvel um star style oh, nice. guitar. And this this is a this is probably my number one for Metal Wave and then my number two for Hellstar. Hellstar. Um, but I try to travel. I usually I travel with just the black Les Paul. Okay. And for okay. Santa Scuridad, um is that was, another Charvel? No, this is a Kramer. That's a Kramer. Okay. And I had I had it redone. I don't know oh, if you can nice. See it. It's got like it's got like oh, the, the flames. Flame. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. It's a Kramer. Yeah. I black out the the headstock because I'm endorsed by ESP, so I can't really play ah. other guitars other, and other guitars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of those. Like, like, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if you if you see a picture of me with this guitar, and you won't be you can't see the name on. You can't it, see you know? the name. Yeah. So. Yeah. um yeah, that's definitely my number one for for Santa Scuridad. I also, mm-hmm. my number two is is a uh, and and what's weird is like for Santa Scuridad, I don't really play any guitars with a Floyd. I do have one, to, but it's, it's like the number three. Yeah, 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 it has a Floyd. It's an Explorer, but this okay. is the number two. Oh, and this nice. Is a, also, a one thousand ESP one thousand. Okay. Um, okay. that kind of looks like the Headfield uh, model too. That one, like a little bit. Uh. I know he's endorsed by ESP as well. He's endorsed, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if he's got uh, uh, an eclipse as well. And and for him, yeah. um, the uh, most uh, most of the guitars are are um, are fitted with uh, e, uh, EMG pickups. Oh, nice. So nice. Of uh, most of them, <laughs> most of them have eighty ones in it. But uh, the Santa. Uh, Oscuridad 
number one has uh, the uh, Jim Root uh, demolition. Oh uh, no way! In that one. Oh yeah. Okay. And so okay. so does the so does the number three. I'll show you the number three. This is the number three. Oh, nice, it's, nice. It's a, it's an Epiphone Explorer. It's, with, oh, okay. With a bar right. and with stuff. Bar. And this one also has the Jim Roots in it and stuff. Okay. Um, so you, you does it have a lot of does it have a lot of good for the game for a lot a lot of good for the mids or how 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 you like it? Um, it's just uh real. It, it's like an eighty one. That uh that is um. That has a kind of a paf feel to it mm, um okay. the, I, the, I love those big if, if i could i would just change them all out but what i have been doing on uh the, the guitars with the 81s is i've been uh getting the uh little um changing out the batteries mm. so they're not nine volt batteries they're I think they're 18 volt batteries or 20 oh no way they're, oh, wow. they're, yeah they're they're bigger they're uh they're a little chunkier yeah the, uh, well they they no, they're just they're the same size as the nine volt, but the the voltage is more, ah. and so it, it it increases the headroom and it makes the distortion a little more pronounced to me. It just sounds mm. uh, a little more defined, you know. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. I'm a tone chaser, so um, yeah, that's what I'm using. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I've done to most of the eighty ones is I've changed the batteries out on that to to, to use the uh, the bigger battery. I forget mm. what the voltage is. It's at a, it's 18 volt. I think it's a, I think it's doubled. I think it's ah, 18. gotcha. Damn. Um, so we come, we come in with, with some heat, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have, you know, I have a, a couple other, I mean, I have a bunch of guitars. So, um, there's one, there's another one that uh, has the Ash, Houston Astros, uh, paint job on it. Oh, gotcha. Um, I use that one every once in a while. I don't like to take it out too much because, you know, don't want to get it stolen or, oh, yeah. you know, you, beat up or something you know, that was kind of on the wall and stuff i use it to record um i have a uh you know, old uh, r24 a Randy rhodes model oh nice, um, that, nice. I, that now it, it 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 was my number one for a long time and now i'm like ah they don't make it anymore and i don't want to take it out on the road no 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 um, you, it, gotta, you, it, you gotta leave the just, classics yeah. alone you gotta leave the yeah, classics yeah, alone <laughs> here and, you know, and, and as far as uh as far as amps i mean i um I stopped using um, amps, real amps, a long time ago, simply because, I mean, when we travel, it's just we, easier, man. Well, yeah. that, and then you just never know what you're gonna get. Mm. And so, um, I, 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 like I said, I'm a tone chaser. So I was using all these different. I used a, a Vox pedal for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, you know, there was a mod. It was one of the first modelers. We, and we had all these cables, and we, but we always sounded the same i mean i remember playing a, a uh, festival in italy and and they came out and they had like these orange amps and their orange amps are really cool but mm. everybody was like i can't get it to sound metal you know i don't yeah, know yeah, what's yeah. going on with this amp no. and we just we just went out there with our little vox pedals and you know we played and they were, they were like how did you do that how did you make that sound like that and we're like oh well we just used the head for power and we used this for tone yeah, 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 and so it was like, oh, okay. So the more um, as time went on, modelers got better, and so now I use a uh, I have an HX stomp, which is like just perfect. It's like about this big, yeah, and it, yeah. it's just three three buttons, which is my clean rhythm and lead. That's all I need. You know, That's all you need, man. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, for yeah, yeah. for metal, yeah. and then uh, I have a, a Quilter two hundred watt power amp. It also sits on the uh, pedal board. Oh, nice, and, nice. Uh, and then, uh, let me... He's like, let me show you. Let me just do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it, it fits. It fits inside of a suitcase. Oh, nice. Yeah, so uh, it's a, it sits inside my carry-on. He's like, let me just show you anyways. It's just like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... um. <laughs> It uh, it sits inside the suitcase. It fits in the carry-on, so they may lose my guitars, but they'll never lose my sound. Mm. So that's the that's the one thing that's super important to me is that mm -hmm. I'm, you know, no matter what happens, I'm I'm going to sound the same. There you Even go. if I have to borrow a guitar, still, you know, it's going to sound pretty close. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, 
Here's the whole pedal board. Oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So okay. it's the, it's the uh, and you got the, I have a mini the wall. Cry baby. Yeah. The mini yeah, cry baby. Mini wall. Then I have my wireless. I have a, this is, wow. Why is that turned up like that? This is a, a, a Fortin mini Zool, which is a noise gate. Mm-hmm. It's so clean. Really, really good. Mm-hmm. And then I have a blackout for tuning. I can tune off this, but I prefer to just to use this. This mm-hmm. uh, just banks. This will will bank the, um, this up and down, um, and then this is the power amp. This is a um, so I can go direct front of house. Oh, nice! So it has a it has a uh, it's a uh, cabinet cabinet emulator. Nice. So uh, uh, that's coming out of here, and then this can go to front of house, or they can mic up the speaker and combine the two. Oh, and then nice. on the on the bottom, I use the um, this is uh, what's the name of this one? Zula, I think. Um, it's a it's a power distribution and um you can use it in europe which is big because uh the voodoo lab you can't use in europe mm. specifically just here in, in the states you know? ah gotcha and that's uh that's it man simple and effective it. man simple yeah, and effective uh, it, yeah it, it takes me, it's, <laughs> it's, it's literally three cables it's two power cables and then and then the speaker cable nice and that's it and it's all in a loom so i just had it all in one loom. Oh, nice oh there you go yeah so, yeah. yeah there you so go it yeah, just yeah. curls up and and i and it fits like perfectly like it it's like someone made that suitcase for this pedal board it just fits <laughs> right in there and it, just then, bre- um, it just breaks it down right there boom yeah, yeah, yeah it just yeah, goes yeah. right in and i just curl the cable up and i close the suitcase and then we're on our way you and know? you're good to go yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so yeah. i've flown i've flown all over the world with it um this was the first year i used that power distribution um i was using uh uh, I was using like uh, all these will will uh, you can use each and one every one of these pedals in Europe mm-hmm. like they, they it'll, it'll like change the power for you gotcha but you gotcha. but then it was like okay so I I had like one two three four I had like five or six power cables you know oh out. shit oh damn yeah yeah so <laughs> now now uh uh with that thing everything goes into that underneath the board and then uh, I just have like the two power cables one coming out of the power amp and then and then the main the main power that powers up the rest of the pedals and then the speaker cable yeah, there you go and man so, yeah, yeah. simple yeah, and effective I mean, yeah. yeah yeah you have to yeah, for me like i said you have to be able to fly with it and i yeah, have yeah. to be able to carry it with me. yeah i need to have it with me. Yeah. I, i'll i'll forego having clothes just to have my <laughs> to have your pedal, pedal yeah, board to, yeah that's like yeah. hey you just need like what, what, a pair of pants and a shirt you're fine dude you're good yeah i, I sometimes <laughs> just have like a little backpack yeah i have like a little back backpack and as long as i have like my contacts and my meds for i'm diabetic so oh, i have my I'll meds with me and and uh um yeah that's all i need man that's i don't, all I don't really yeah. need anything yeah. You know, I'm good, you know, and hopefully when I land, the guitar's there, and if not, you know, hopefully someone will lend one to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 get a little, get a little loner or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So but we even. started putting, we started putting trackers oh, okay. all the gear now. So oh, nice, like, nice, nice. So la- last time we went to Europe, uh, I almost, I, I think I knew before we even left the runway that they didn't put the guitar on the oh. plane. Because I looked at my bass player, I looked at Garrick, I said, hey man, uh, I don't think my I don't think my guitar's on the plane. And mm-hmm. we were like taxiing. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, it, it shows it's still at the terminal. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, man. Oh, no, no way. So when once we, we landed in London and, and uh, yeah, it was still here oh, in the United States. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> so uh, uh. so uh, we had a, a flight from London to Greece. And then when we got to Greece, they said, hey, your guitar's in London. So... Uh, so I looked and I was like, oh, yeah, it is. And so they were like, well, we'll get it here in the next couple hours. So yeah, yeah. We, oh, were, nice, we were nice. able to get the guitar. Yeah. So we were oh, able okay, to track perfect. it down and stuff, you know. Yeah yeah. 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 But, you know, we didn't get the guitars until like 30 minutes before we went on. Oh, oh for the show. Wow. <laughs> so you that was like yeah. quick, kind of like, let's clean it up, let's tune it real yeah. quick. Boom. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, open it up. Oh, it's there. Come on, let's go. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, you're yeah. fine. Cool. So, Nothing. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That happens a lot, man. That happens a lot. I've been, uh, talking to more and more guys out there that are like, man, you know, it's almost like I don't want to even uh, travel with it, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, just bring it, and, with, just bring it on the plane with you at that point. There's you know? guys that are trying to do that too, but, yeah. but then, then I can't bring the rig. 
Yeah. You know, so that's it's a, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't yeah, situation. And, yeah. and the other thing, sometimes they, they won't let you bring it on. Ah. And so if you have it in some little gig bag, there's a chance it's going to get even damaged, you know. Yeah, you, those true. bags aren't made to be thrown into the, they, into yeah. the airplane, you know. Exactly. So, um, I know that, that's probably a, like a scary situation. You you take it out and then you hear just like this like rattle. You're like, da, 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 da. and you're like, oh, man, they uh, probably just threw this shit, man. They, they, yeah, they didn't even do I, it with love. I have, I have pretty, I have pretty, uh, pretty heavy duty um case that i carry with me oh, so okay, it's, it's made by gator so i haven't had oh, nice, nice. with that yeah. and i had a, a i had another one uh it was a double case it's pretty heavy i mean it was 50 pounds you know with the two guitars which is yeah. right at the limit mm -hmm. but uh, it was it was it was a bit heavy to to lug around you mm. know um okay. okay i think i might get one of the inkies uh they're the double case or actually i think they're triple case maybe but you can carry a uh, few guitars in there and oh, it's nice, supposed nice. to come in right it's supposed to be much lighter and uh come in durable with, uh, you know like yeah dur durable as well durable, and, yeah, and, yeah and uh no um no overage fee for the for the weight oh nice nice but, nice. but I, I don't know if they charge an overage fee because of how big it is so i was asking mm -hmm. my friend if he, he just was going to play the Alcatraz Festival. I was like, "Hey, man, when you get back, let me know how they, you know, how yeah. much they charge." You're like, "Give me the logistics." Yeah, want to know if it's worth it, you know? Yeah, and that's sure, the man. whole thing. It's like, well, if you have two guitars in there, then both of them are lost, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, 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 that seems to be happening a lot, you know. And I don't know if it's just uh, the recession, man. Can't, yeah, not even that. It's just recession, can't. man. It's just yeah, like all the logistics with it, man. But you know, yeah. it is what it is, man. But but Larry, brother, man, I I could talk to you for another hour, brother. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I, right no, I appreciate your time, man. You know, I again, I love everything that we're we're, we're doing. We got we got to we got to have we got to have you back on, man. We got to have we got to do something. Yeah, for sure, you know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm grooving with you, man. And you guys yeah. are out in Texas, right? You you said Houston, right? You guys we're, are we're in Houston, Texas, man. Gotcha. Yeah, right gotcha. here, right here, uh, near the near the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Um, nice. Yeah, and we grew we grew up in the barrios here in in in, uh, in in Houston and in Pasadena and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I got I, um, I yeah, got those... family I got family in Waco, so I got it now. Not only when I come and visit, I got to pay a visit to the guys in Love and War. I got to pay a visit to you guys, man. I got yeah, man. It's, <laughs> hey, I got to hey, come that's down. A, that's a man. good drive, though, man. Don't think that's like a quick drive from Waco I, to Houston. I'll drive, like brother. Five hours, man. That's, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that, man. I'm cool. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Let's man. do it, man. We'll that's fucking it. throw some carcass on the pit and let's do it. Some beer and watch a football, man. <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny that you say that, man, because you're in Texas. And like I tell my family, like, look, I love you guys more than anything in the world, but I'm coming for that barbecue, man. I'm coming for uh, that yeah. text. I'm coming for that text mix, man. You know, so because <laughs> yeah. yeah. over here in Cali, we don't have barbecue. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't care what anybody said. We don't. We don't. We we can't do barbecue. We don't know how to do barbecue. But and I'm like, when I go out there, I'm in heaven, man. I'm like the briskets, you know, oh, the yeah. ribs. And I got the, Austin. Austin's killer for brisket, man. I love oh, going down there for, uh, for brisket yeah. barbecues. So. We got good places here too, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you, no, I know Houston's on the map. You know? No, yeah. Houston's on the map, man. So I, 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 I'm definitely gonna come visit you guys, and we'll we'll throw it down, dude. You know, yeah, but... let us know, man. We'll make sure that we're we're around, or maybe we can throw a jam or something. Hell yeah, man, yeah, yeah. In. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'll throw some bass on there. I mean, it's not gonna right be as on. good, but it's not as good as Ray, yeah. but you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll try to I'll try to keep up. <laughs> cool. Right on. But brother, anything that you want to plug, man? Anything that you know? Any where can they find you? Where can they do the stuff? You know, um, you can you find uh, you can find uh, Santa Oscuridad on Santa Oscuridad uh, on uh, Facebook. We are uh, Facebook slash Santa Oscuridad metal. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's that metal. Okay. Um, you can look up anybody from the band. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can just look up my name, Larry Berrigan. Um, and uh, all, the, all the other guys are always online and, and accessible to everybody. Um, that's the thing about me, too. It's like, you know, if you hit me up, I'm going to answer. I'm not going to. I don't have a, an assistant that's going to be like, oh, we'll get back to you or anything like yeah. that. I'll, I'll answer <laughs> you. And um, Yeah, if you want to talk gear, you want to talk about, you know, how did you play this or whatever. I get a lot of questions about you know, like, how did you play this or how does this go or whatever? And, 
if I can remember, you know, I'll mm-hmm. do a little video for you and show it to you. I'm not, you know, like that's mine or anything that sure, you wouldn't play it. That's, that's just putting, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's just honoring us in a way. And we're humbled by that, you know, of course. Of course. Um, uh, yeah, I just want to thank everybody, all the, all the, uh, Santa Trinidad fans, um, know that we're, you know, we have stuff in the can and we're going to be putting it out, uh, one at a time until we culminate into like one cool EP or album, but, uh, probably more than likely an EP. And, um, you know, we're going to be playing. So if you hear the band is, uh, coming around, but please come out and visit and, and uh, for sure, if, we, if, if you do come and stick around after the show, we'll, we always come out, we sign, we, we take, you know, however many pictures you want to take. And if you want to drink some <laughs> beer, we'll, we'll drink as many beers you want to, you know. And, nice, nice. and uh, uh, yeah, everybody's, um, you know, very, very down to earth. And, and uh, as far as Hellstar goes, uh, we're working on a new album there, too. Uh, we got, I think, eight songs written. Um, oh, nice. Just got to start, you know, writing. I mean, actually recording in earnest, like the basic tracks. And uh, we have like a bunch of scratch tracks. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much done. Um, a new one. And it's going to be heavy, of course. And um, Santa Oscuridad's next gig will be here in Houston at the Black Magic Social Club on oh, nice. September. Oh, man, I want to say it's the 18th. Let me look at my mat, my calendar. Uh, we're mm. going to be opening up for Solicitor. I don't know if you've heard of those guys. Solicitor, no. Yeah, they're part. Of, they're kind of like a part of the that uh, that new wave of traditional metal. Oh, okay. okay. It's, it's coming yeah, back, it's, man. It's yeah, coming yeah, back. Yeah, it's the 18th. Yeah, it's oh, the nice. 18th. Uh, we'll be playing with them, and then uh, that's September. Oh, and then September 30th, the big one. Uh, we're going to be playing in the Valley in Harlingen at the Hop. Um, oh nice so nice. yeah we need uh and terra stomping grounds man yeah, yeah we need, to, <laughs> we need, to, we need uh, all the uh the mexicanos from uh Matamoros to come up and and check out the show and everybody from McAllen and shit you know so yeah man i mean like i said we're 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 trying we're trying to to, to get it out there and hopefully uh this will be our year where we can actually get stuff out there and then next year it'll be a little bit easier to actually catch gigs and stuff, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Larry, best of luck to you guys, brother, and everything. Thank you, you brother. Loving the music, man. You, you're going to hear more from me. That's for damn sure, brother. All right on. Thank you. <laughs> you so know, much, I'm, man. I'm a fan, man, you know, and I want to thank you so much for your time. You know, bendiciones, man. Thank you for letting me to talk to you and just hearing, you know, just having an opportunity to talk to you, brother. It's just, it means the world to me, man. You know, cool, thank man. you so thank much, you, man. man. I'm humbled. Yeah, man. So-